Hello, it's James here. We're at TCT Show 2018. TCT stands for Time Compression Technology, which is basically rapid prototyping. A lot of it's 3D printing, but there's a few other things. So I've got the Lulzbot Mini 2, which has, of course, got the E3D Aero Struder. So this year, I'm on the E3D booth. We've also got Open Dog, which you'll be looking at in a minute. And we're going to look at some other stuff at the show. And don't forget, you can get your Open Dog t-shirts, stickers, mugs and other bits of merchandise from my store. The link's in the description below. And all of the profits come back to fund awesome projects like this. So we've got the new Lulzbot Mini 2, which has several new features, including the E3D Aero Struder. And of course, we're on E3D's booth today. It's also got the modular bed system, so you can take the glass and turn it upside down. One side is just glass and one side is PEI. And the heat is then bonded to a metal sheet, so that's reversible. Or you could put other beds on. We've also got the LCD on this machine and we've also got belt driven Z axis which is quite interesting and it seems to be printing pretty good. I've printed loads of open dog bones over the last two weeks to give away and it's still going strong. So we're just powering up the dog, we're going to go through the calibration routine for all the motors, so we'll get all that done. Then we're going to do a demo, so in part 9 we've done half the kinematic model. In reality the next three axes are done as well, so we're going to demo that. Uh, it doesn't quite walk, but it can take one leg off the ground at a time. So we're just homing all the motors to get the zero position and also calibrating the motor so the motor stator position versus the encoder so it can drive the motors properly. It appears to have got here in one piece so far. There's still four motors to check that the encoders are still on, the wires haven't broken. I could speed this up but I want to keep an eye on them to check they do all power up. There's still some issues with the encoder fitting. I need to get a laid out that's arriving next week to make the proper metal parts instead of 3D printers studding in and blue tape. So uh, basically what we've got is uh, a six axis kinematic model that works a trigonometry all the way back through the robot so I can position the legs in X, Y and Z. It works out what all the angles should be. So the first three axis that I've shown you in a video that went out on Tuesday, which is part nine of the series, is the three translation axis. So it should be to move the robot in perfectly straight lines. So I twist this stick, it should go up and down. That's about as low as it goes. Obviously we're using bolt screws here, so they run to an end eventually. But they don't have any backlash, which is why I made that choice. And then we can move forwards, slide backwards. There is a slight error, which is that the math is right, but the robot is wrong until I put bigger feet on with pressure sensors in, so it may go to slight slope, but eventually it'll be fine. And also we can transition sideways. And of course I can mix all of those axes together, so the numbers have worked through one axis to the next to the next, and it passes the numbers along. So I can go up and all the way around. The stick is the next three axes, which are rotation axis, which is pitch, roll, and yaw. So I built a model so it positions the feet for pitch, roll, and yaw in terms of the X, Y, Z engine. So it passes again those numbers. Once I'd solved X, Y, and Z, it was easy just to pass into that. So the numbers again work all the way through. So the other stick, if we turn it, we've got yaw, which will go about 20 degrees either way. It's possible to run the end stops on this if I mix too many axes together. It'll also pitch, which is that way. You can hear it creaking like an old ship, and that's because the feet are too short and it's at some point straining. And also roll. And again, I can mix those axes together, so we can do this sort of thing. And I can also mix them with the first three, so we can go higher. We can pitch and then we can yaw, or I can push 
forward and backwards. They should go round in a perfectly straight line with an exact point in them, um, an imaginary axis through the middle of the robot. So there is motion smoothing as well as a first order filter on all the joints. So if I make a rakish move, it should start quick and then decelerate. Uh, which is the best I've got for motion smoothing. It's not actually a true S-curve, so it's still quite responsive. It doesn't quite walk yet, but we can take one leg off the ground at a time. At the moment it's got no sense of stability, so it's just going to literally lean over and try and pick up one leg. Hopefully. One to do, that one. It's not great though. So you can see this quite actually quite unstable, even though it looks dynamic when it's when it's doing these moves with four feet on the ground. Actually walking is going to be a much harder problem. So uh, the aim will be to actually have diagonal feet coming off the ground, and then I'll have an inertial measurement unit in that will measure how far it's tipping as it comes forward. Of course, it'll be like cutting the leg off the table. So it automatically transition sideways. So it sort of prowls onto each diagonal foot. Hopefully it's the plan. So it makes moves kind of like that. But of course the kinematic model is the foundation. So it's, now I can just transition in a straight line. It makes that code much easier. And to keep three feet on the ground flat to move back in a straight line rather than having one foot come down and it's in the robot. Apart from any mechanical flex, of course. Alright, so I'm here with Chris from Wrights Robotics, who I met last year at TCT and uh, basically had printed Johnny 5's head. And now, uh, Chris, you've made the rest of Johnny 5, uh, the whole body and everything else, and it drives around completely from scratch in a year. Yeah, it's definitely been a, a, a big project to do. I mean, as you say, I've had last year, so the entire rest of the body, which is literally hundreds if not thousands of bits, all 3D printed. And every single piece is 3D printed, so there's no plywood, no other CNC or anything, so it's just totally FDM, or what sort of 3D printing have you used? It's uh, all 3D printed, there's no CNC in. It's FDM, as in the standard material plastics, but I'm also using like SLA um, resin printers and the composite printers from um, like the Matt Forge range that actually put fibre within the parts to make them stronger. Is that carbon fibre or is it sort of like hemp or what's the what's he techniques have we got there? Carbon fibre and Kevlar and fibreglass. It comes in a little roll of filament, really, it's like um, fishing wire and it actually embeds it within the part and it's continuous fibre. So Johnny 5's animatronic, I can see his eyes moving there. What uh, other motors and uh, features have you got in the robot? Do his arms move or...? His arms don't currently move, but they're going to. Um, this is like, um, like an evolution of the, the design. So at the moment, I've got some motors, DC motors in his drive to make his tracks move. I have a NEMA stepper motor for his neck motion. At various servos to control his nose and eye flaps, as well as the electronics to make his lip lights light up and sound. And so the motors you mentioned there were 775s, and those are geared down? Yes, it's the RS 775s. There's two of them per track with a Bainsbot BB150 gearbox. OK, and what sort of uh, ratio did you have on that? So there's a lot of talk about it being a big machine and needing these stupid old induction motors and no one can find the parts. It's roughly a 50 to 1 ratio at the moment. Um, it, it was actually had an extra stage in it, but I couldn't actually push him without him being powered, so I had to take a stage out so I could actually manually move him. Right, and all the tracks, those I guess are 3D printed, there's some screws in there, but they're all just three, uh, FDM prints to make all those interlocking tracks. Yep, all the tracks are PLA and the actual track pads are mixed between ABS and TPU 98. 
So it looks uh, pretty much like Johnny Five from the movie. So have you hand painted or like the blue and the orange bits here with a paintbrush or are they separate inserts? That, that's all being sprayed primed it and then sprayed it with the closest colours I could try to find in the UK. Yeah, so I did a half scale Johnny Five build and I made some videos years ago about a, a company that re uh, released the plans. There's some Facebook groups and some other places for life-size Johnny Five builds, but where did the plans actually come from this and where can somebody find them now? So there's um, a Facebook group and a website for Input Inc. Um, some really talented people over in the States. They're the ones who designed the um, CAD files from the original one. Uh, Johnny Five that they found over in California and they've released it to the public so if you have a 3D printer or CNC machine you can actually make your own for free. And I guess there's some people using plywood and all sorts of materials as well as 3D printing. I've seen a couple of builds. Everything from cardboard all the way up to the full-on metal. Whatever material you can work with that you're good with, go for it. Excellent, so uh, don't forget to check out Chris's pages, Wright's Robotics, I'll put the link in the description below. I'm here with Josh from E3D, so I thought we should feature this stuff since they're hosting my dog. So uh, tell me about the Tool Changer. So the Tool Changer is a new research platform that we've been developing. So it's based on a motion system which we developed. Basically it's a really stable, robust 3D printing platform which we are using as like the fundamental base to develop this tool changing system. So what we want to do here is demonstrate that it's possible to have four different tools and a head that can pick them up, drop them off, and that all those heads can have different functions. So in this case, we've just got four different tools that are all print heads, right? So these are all standard V6s, but there's nothing stopping one of these being a volcano, another one being a camera, a different one being a pick and place machine. And going forward, we could even try more adventurous things like adding a spindle so that we could do additive subtractive but manufacturing. So can you tell me about the temperature capabilities? What temperature can we do on this sort of system? What materials can we print? Basically this uses a standard V6. So we we can modify the head to use like copper blocks and we can use higher temperature nozzles so we can print at like super high temperatures, 500 degrees plus. That's more than enough for us to print peak. So we've actually done a load of printing with peak. We've worked with a partner in industry and we've developed a peak specifically for 3D printing which works really nicely on this, this platform. Um, it itself doesn't have a heated, in, heated enclosure, a heated chamber, so it's not perfect for like, high temperature printing in that sense. Um, but the hot ends are more than capable of it. All right, so pricing and availability on this is due for imminent release? So at the moment we're doing what we're calling Beta 30. Um, so we're releasing about 30 printers to people who are at the beginning of our list, um, so people that place pre-orders. Um, the intention is that the price will be around £1,200 for the motion system itself. Um, because we're selling it as a kind of modular system, as, as like I said, a bit of a research platform, people can pick and choose what they actually need to use. So the tool changer will be sold separately, all of the individual tools are sold separately, and we're partnering with Duet to sell the electronics. Um, so it's a, bit, it's a bit mixed, and I think to get this entire setup, to answer your question, about £2,500. Okay, so pretty reasonable. All right, so check out the E3D website and blog for more info on the tool changer. All right, I'm here with Joseph Prusha. So Joe's got a new printer called the SL1. Tell me about the SL1. So uh, this is our new resin-based printer. Uh, it is LCD-based with LED shining uh, from the bottom. So we acquired a company with five years of ex experience and we just gave it uh, over the last year, we just gave it you know, a Prusa touch and made it much smoother, sleeker and added a few improvements. So compared to the most of the normal LCD based uh, resin printers, we have uh, a lot of convenience features and you know much better build construction. The main body is made from uh, milled aluminium so everything is uh, nice and sturdy, so you don't have any kinks between the layers, so everything is nice and smooth. And uh, one of the signature features is uh, tilting, tilting bed, so it helps to peel, uh, peel off the, the print from the, from the FEP film, which means that it, there's uh, less chance that it will get unstuck from the build plate. It has uh, uh, auto calibration thanks to the Trinamic drivers we are using for a long time in the Mark III printers. And also we have fume extraction system which greatly reduces the smell from the resin printing. And yeah, there's a bunch of more features, but the best is to take a look at the press release because I always forgot at least two or three, so I'm not, 
<laughs> okay, and of course, being Prusa, it's open source. Yes, of course. So we are open sourcing this design once the first unit ships out the door. And together with the SL1 uh, is the curing and washing machine. So you don't have to uh, be messy with, uh, with the resin. So you just take, the, you just take the, the platform after you finish printing and wash it uh, in IPA solution. And then you just remove it from the platform and finish the curing inside the same machine. So it doesn't take up a lot of, a lot of space. That's all from TCT Show 2018. Well, actually, there's a lot more, but most of it's proprietary. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates on Open Dog. All right, that's all for now. Um, do I look good? Do I look good? Yeah. Is your hat on square? You sure? Yeah, just check. Here? So we've got the new... Oh, no, hang on, I almost said altar maker then. Are you made of peak? All right.